Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Glue Stick channel. I make videos about Dungeons and Dragons lore full time and have a huge collection of videos for you to binge watch. I upload two videos per week with a live stream every week as well. If you like what I do, please consider becoming a member of the channel by clicking the join button down below or backing me on Subscribestar or Patreon where you get access to all the scripts I write for these vids if you prefer to read what I'm saying. I also have a Discord server with an active community and of course subscribe to the channel if you think I've earned a subscription. Previously I've only talked about the Displacer Beast as a deadly addition to an encounter with Etikaps which is a great injustice to one of the more iconic monsters of Dungeons and Dragons. Nowhere else will you find such a creature. Oh wait, no. They were directly inspired by a monster featured in novels by A.E. Van Voigt called The Curl, which appeared in his first short story titled Black Destroyer, published in Astounding Science Fiction in 1939, and later appearing again in the novel The Voyage of the Space Beagle, published in 1950. And the Inspiration is not purely the aesthetic of these creatures, as we'll talk about later. The alien species is described by the author as being a large cat, except that its forelegs are twice as long as its hind legs, and it possesses tentacles attached to its shoulders that terminate in tentacled fingers, but this was later changed to suction cups. Its skin coloration is not mentioned, well, it's implied in the title, but was depicted as black on the cover art for the original magazine appearance, and indeed, Displacer Beasts have got blue-black fur. Over the course of the short story and the novel, the ecology of the creature is pieced together like a mystery. This is an intelligent predator originally brought to the planet as a pet of another alien species. It is extremely adaptable to different atmospheres and environments, and it's more of an unfortunate happenstance that the creature can feed on the phosphorus or potassium in human bones. In a similar way, it's an unfortunate happenstance that the Displacer Beast has wound up stalking the dank halls and dismal dungeons under dark caverns in almost every type of terrain, particularly old forests and the worlds of the Prime Material Plane, that are accessible by supernaturally occurring portals to the Feywild. They are a monster that can appear just about anywhere, because they didn't arrive on the world through evolution, they actually fled from the Feywild because they were being exterminated there, and they are intelligent enough to have done something about it. While Dungeons & Dragons tells us these creatures were captured, trained, selectively bred to enhance their predatory and aggressive nature, it doesn't say that they were native to the Feywild either. And the same thing could be said for similar species trained and kept by the opposing faction of the Feywild, the Blink Dogs. But these two species were both from another plane of existence and became naturalised to the Feywild. The question is, what plane did they originate in? We don't know, that's the whole point. Not knowing about the creature's true origin, nature and capabilities is as much a part of what it is thematically as its tentacles and displacement power. So let me illustrate just how the original curl alien can inform us how to make maximum use of the displacer beast in our D&D adventures. First, a little bit of ecology. Most assume displacer beasts hunt and live alone like tigers, but this is not always the case. In an environment with plenty of game, they have a reduced hunting range and may live in small family groups. They are not highly intelligent, but they are certainly a lot smarter than any lion or tiger. In fact, in the Monster Manual for 3.5 edition, they are listed as being able to understand and even speak a little bit of common, which is also reflected in some comics and stories which feature Displacer Beasts, so it's perfectly fine to include this in your game, even though it's not reflected in 5th edition stat blocks currently. I think it's still perfectly valid, though most likely very rare. We'll talk about that as well. They can be raised from kittens to be trained guards and even pets. The intelligent fae of the Unseelie Court discovered this a very long time ago. However, Displacer Beasts are predators, they have a strong hunting instinct and they enjoy killing other creatures. So it is an instinct that must be taken into account when living with them. They're also large, an adult ranges from 8 to 12 feet long, weighing between 500 and close to 700 pounds. They have six legs, the front four are usually used as forelimbs and give them a powerful grip and agility, and also anchor them in place as they attack with those two 10 foot long tentacles which grow from just above the first pair of limbs between the shoulder blades, which gives them a wide gait between those limbs, a lean and muscular build. This creature has a body built for brawling, or perhaps 
dealing with a higher normal gravity than would be found in the Feywild or most of the worlds of the Primaterial Plane. Who knows? They are not cats, though they are mammals, and there's enough cause for there to be cute displacer kittens for me to not argue the point too fiercely. I like displacer kittens too. Ridley Scott's Aliens from the Alien movies are at least partly based on the same inspiration as the displacer beast, and the way these creatures hunt tells us a lot about how the displacer beast hunts. They stay out of sight, they stalk down their prey, isolate them, and then they attack from a safe distance using lightning fast and ferociously strong strikes with their tentacles, each of which ends with a tough pad bristling with small horns as sharp and hard as fangs. One interesting observation is that while displacer beasts have litters of between two and four kittens, and not every year, rather every few years, these kittens are born with their eyes fully open and a full set of teeth. So although the mother produces milk for them, the kittens eat meat from the moment they are born. This certainly seems like the species has been engineered somewhat, and there is no way these fully fanned kittens are going to be feeding on milk, for very obvious and needle-sharp reasons. The kittens grow fast and leave the lair by the age of four months. They're not born with fully grown tentacles, they don't even begin to grow until the house cat sized kittens are about 8 weeks old. Then they sprout and grow at a rate of about an inch or so per day over the next 30 days, by which time the kitten will be about the same size as a large lynx. They're not even fully grown until after the first year. A juvenile displacer beast will be close to 7.5 feet long but be very lean, only about 350 pounds. And an adult displacer beasts have the ability to go without food for long periods of time, losing a lot of body mass as they endure starvation between meals. This is just another remarkable trait of their adaptivity. In perfect conditions, after two years, the males will be around 10 feet long, females a foot smaller, the tail is at least half the total length of the body, and the tentacles are about the similar length. It's interesting that the aggression of the creatures increases dramatically when it grows those tentacles, and unlike big cats, they don't gorge on meat and sleep all day. These predators are on the move most of the time. They have a high natural metabolism, and when they engage in combat, they are truly ferocious. Unlike most big cats, they don't kill by restricting the airway of their prey. They tear their prey open and bleed it out, inflicting horrific wounds with those tentacles. A few strikes to the head of most creatures is enough to disable them. The displacer beasts could just hang back and wait for the prey to collapse, but they don't. Often it's a pack of displacer beasts. They close in to rip the prey apart. While the 5th edition stats give the basic details of their speed of 40 feet per round, it neglects to give them a climbing speed, nor take into account that adult displacer beasts can leap 20 feet straight up, 25 feet across on just a standing jump, and double that on a running jump, meaning they can run and leap right into the canopy of a stand of trees without even needing to climb the trunk. They have six limbs and can run at full speed on just the rear four, leaving the four limbs free to claw at running prey. Just a tap to the prey's leg is usually all it takes to send them tumbling to the ground in a heap, and this is swiftly followed by those wicked tentacles. They certainly can attack with their claws and bite, which are just as bit as dangerous as that of a leopard. Both the bite and claws are plus five to hit and do 1d6 plus three damage. The bite does piercing damage while the claws do slashing damage. I think it's also slightly criminal that the Displacer Beast doesn't have a bonus to stealth checks of at least plus 7, or a natural pounce attack. Even if it doesn't use that tactic often, it should be listed there still. So if the Displacer Beast moves at least 20 feet straight toward a creature and then hits with a claw attack on the same turn, that target must succeed on the DC 13 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. If the target is knocked prone, the Displacer Beast can make an additional attack with its tentacles. Those tentacles seem to be vital to the ability of the creatures to perform their remarkable displacement illusion. This requires a very fine control and there is a lot of sensory and muscular connections from dense nerve fiber bundles in those tentacles that link directly to the displacer beast's spine. The way the displacement works is not very well understood. It has to do with the vibrational state of the creature in relation to reality around it, and particularly light. So it's less of an optical illusion, and more like it's partially shifting out of phase with reality, like it's almost teleporting, but not quite. This is not magic. It can't be dispelled or stopped by a beholder's anti-magic zone or an um, anti-magic spell. This is the reason, basically, why being anywhere near a blink dog is so infuriating for the displacer beast. 
as the innate blinking teleportation ability of the blink dogs creates a highly erratic, irritating feedback loop that feels like nails dragging down the chalkboard, amplified and channeled directly into the displacer beast's spine. That's why they can sense the presence of a blink dog up to 150 feet away, as this effect literally sets their hackles on edge as though they're getting mild electric shocks, and as a result of that, they have always hated blink dogs. A feeling that's entirely mutual, and just made even more pronounced because the Fay Seely Court has bred and hunted with blink dogs for thousands of years and uses them to hunt down and exterminate the displacer beasts. I should note that blink dogs have no problem hunting, killing and eating displacer beasts, and vice versa. Displacer beasts certainly have no problem hunting down creatures just as large and even larger than themselves. In fact, in an article by uh, Aaron E. Steele, Old School Monsters Displacer Beasts, he talks about the original inspiration for them and the fact that the original creatures could feed on the id of their prey, and that may correlate to the amount of hit dice that a creature has. So they may get more satisfaction the larger and more formidable the prey is. So that's an interesting take on it. They also prey on other predators, so they will hunt and kill bears, wolves, humanoids, and any of the big cats, including tigers. Okay, what are some of the things you may not know about them based on lore not included in 5th edition? Their eyes glow bright green, even after the displacer beast dies. They hunt for pleasure as well as for food, and will kill other creatures for the sheer sport of it. Displacer beast's eyes are just as highly valued as their hide because they are commonly regarded to be potent good luck charms. They don't usually eat their kill in the location that they killed it. They prefer to drag it to a quiet and concealed location or a lair nearby if possible. Much like a leopard, they will drag the body up a tree and eat it while sitting in the branches. And unlike other, any of the other big cats, they often make quite a fairly permanent lair up in the canopy of large trees, even raising their cubs up there concealed by the leaves. Even a perfectly raised and trained displacer beast can and will turn on and attack its owner with deadly force if the owner gets between it and its prey one too many times. Typically, the only displacer beasts that learn how to speak a little common are the freakishly large individuals. The smaller displacer beasts rarely do so, and yes, a full-sized adult male displacer beast can be ridden as a mount for a medium-sized humanoid, but they sure as hell are not going to wear a saddle, so good luck. Looking at the rest of the stats for the Displacer Beast, they have an armor class of 13 and between 40 and 130 hit points. Their normal speed is 40 feet per round, which is fast as a tiger. Strength of 18, dexterity of 15, constitution of 16, as you would expect. Intelligence is a very high animal IQ of 6. Wisdom is 12 and charisma of 8. So sharp senses, dark vision out to 60 feet, good hearing and vision, but they don't have the keen sense of smell you would expect. They are visual trackers rather than scent trackers. They have two traits, one called avoidance. So if the displacer beast is subject to an effect that allows it to make a saving throw to take only half damage, it instead takes no damage if it succeeds on the saving throw and only half damage if it fails. Then their famous displacement ability. The avoidance, by the way, is not dependent on their displacement ability. So if, the, uh, if one is shut down, it doesn't shut down the other automatically. The displacement ability is where the displacement belief projects a magical illusion that makes it appear to be standing near its actual location, causing attack rolls against it to have disadvantage. If it is hit by an attack, that trait is disrupted until the end of its next turn. It's still working, it's just that the people that are attacking it know where it is. This trait also is disrupted while the displacer beast is incapacitated or has a speed of zero, so it needs to be moving, or at least capable of moving, in order to maintain this effect. The monster manual says that displacer beasts hunt alone or in small prides that demonstrate skill at setting ambushes. A single beast will strike and withdraw, luring prey into a densely wooded area where its pack mates wait. Packs of displacer beasts hunting near trade roads recall the frequency and schedule of regular caravans, which speaks to their intelligence and their ability to remember, laying down ambushes to pick off those caravans. I think they work perfectly in tandem with giant spiders and etacaps, who also live in and hunt from dense, trapped, ambush-prone older forest canopies. And I think that the Splacer Beasts most likely have quite a taste for fey creatures. I mean, they'd be used to eating fey creatures after all that time in the fey world. Would be likely to lair in close proximity to portals to the fey world for that very reason. 
It is well known that their coat can be transformed with additional magical crafting into a cloak of displacement. This cloak must always be worn on the outside, uh, be the outermost covering garment for obvious reasons. The wearer is assumed to be at least capable of being in motion for the effect to work, but it works very much the same way as the displacer beast's actual ability. The cloak projects an illusion that makes the wearer appear to be standing in a place near their actual location, causing any creature to have disadvantage on attack rolls against them. If the wearer takes damage, the property ceases to function until the start of the next turn, so it's exactly the same. This property is suppressed while the wearer is incapacitated, restrained, or otherwise unable to move. doesn't say anything about it being uh, dispellable. It is a magical item, so I'll leave it up to you. I hope that this has provided some comprehensive insight, lore, maybe just cleared up some mysteries about these iconic monsters. Information for this video was sourced from Dragon Magazine issue 109 as well as Monster Manuals the creature appears in, and a special shout out to the Power Score RPG blog, which with which you should most certainly go and check out, and of course uh, Paladin in the Citadel blog for uh, Aaron E. Steele. Go and have a read up on there if you want an interesting take on some possible interactions with the intelligent and speaking version of Displacer Beasts and their taste for larger and larger prey. Please hit the like button if you made it this far. Subscribe if you like what I do. Check out my Subscribestar or Patreon uh, for all the scripts for these videos. Buy some Teespring merchandise. I've got some sweet new gear there for you. Wear your geek with pride. And as always, thanks for listening and I'll be back with more for you very soon.